the same power to raise strikes from the dead it is in us. Amen. And as we sing this next part, I just want us to sing this off all that we have. Just sing that Jesus paid this ultimate price for us. How could he pay this for us? The grave could not contain the power of his name. So we'll come the grave and we'll come yet. So let's sing this out together and the grave could not contain.
see a little bit louder.
Amen. Jesus. Yes. We give you glory and we give you honor and we praise. Praise you, God. You make the darkness tremble, God, not just in this world, God, but in my heart. And this morning we submit our hearts and our lives to you, God. Thank you for this time that we get to worship you. We get to come together and raise our voice to you, God, because you make the darkness tremble, God, and you make the fears be still. And so we submit those fears and those worries and those stresses to you, God, our Lord and our Savior. And in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give God a hand. Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. As part of our worship every single week, we pray for another church. We pray for another pastor in the valley because we know that we do not do this alone. We don't exist in isolation. And this isn't just about pure heart. This is about the kingdom of God. So today we want to lift up Pastor Lynn Winters of Cornerstone Church. And he's part of the Arizona uh, Network of, of Arizona, no, the United Pastors of Arizona, that's it, uh, network and part of, that. Pastor Dan is part of that as well, and they, they join together, they pray for one another, and link arms together, because we do not do this alone. Would you join me in praying for him? Father God, we pray for Pastor Lynn, that you would continue to bless him, to bless his family, to bless his leadership, and bless his ministry. God, would you protect him? from the attacks that would come against him, from the enemy or, or, or within his family or, or within his church, God, from any single attack, God, that you would protect him and that you would guard him and you would keep him safe. And God, continue to give him wisdom and vision and leadership and leading in and saying yes to you and what you want to do in him and through him. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. And can we please have the usher step forward to receive the tithes and offerings? But first, I want to go ahead and talk about our mission trip that we went on in December. It was the largest mission trip of 44 people that went out to build a house out in Rocky Point. Praise God. I just think it's so incredible that we can go beyond just our four walls to go ahead and bless others. And that's, why, that's what we do. It's for the sake of others, beyond ourselves, for our other families in Christ. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, you are amazing. And we're just forever in awe of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for your provision and for the generosity that this church provides all the time, Lord. You are amazing and it's because of you, Lord. And I pray that we continue to work for your kingdom, Lord, and that your name is glorified above all names, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Pure Heart Church, a place where you can be encouraged to come authentically as you are, experience healing and growth, and discover meaning and purpose through a relationship with Jesus Christ. We connect with God through worship, salvation, baptism, and community. We want to help you grow with others in the family of God through personal, relational, and intentional discipleship. This happens through discipleship, coaching, and life groups and support ministries. Wondering what your next step is to take? Move Starting Point is an eight-week experience to help you begin building relationships and getting connected here. In it, we explore what it is to become more like Jesus for the sake of others and how ministries at Pure Heart help you in that process. We are a community that values transparency, vulnerability, and relationships, and our shared connection and love for Christ. We go out into greater community and the world to make a real change. Volunteers are an integral part of the Pure Heart family. There are so many opportunities available here to use your gifts, talents, and to bless others and be a vital part of the ministries across our campus. To get plugged in, you can sign up online or get more information in the lobby. How's everyone doing today? Woo! Um, we have baptisms coming up on January 19th and 20th, so that is a great way to publicly show your faith in Jesus Christ. I always get so emotional during baptisms, and I will never forget the first time that I was baptized. So if that's something that you would like to be a part of, the classes do start next week. So please sign up online and click the banner, or go ahead and check it out on our information desk in the lobby. And then our chaplain's class starts up on January 24th. If you have a heart to become a licensed pure heart chaplain, this is your first step. We have chaplains in funeral homes, hospice, hospitals, local schools. And for many, um, the, the ministers, the, the chaplains, are the, the very first point of connecting with people in their, in their moments of intense pain and grief. And so we're so thankful for our chaplains. 
So if that's on your heart, if God's placed that burden on you, uh, please register for these classes. January 24th, you can register online or at the information counter to become a licensed Pure Heart Chaplain. Another thing is that marriage is such a beautiful thing, and it also can be a very tough thing as well. And we understand that, and we know that here at Pure Heart. So one way perfectly to go ahead and start preparing for that union, you should be part of our Becoming One premarital classes. It's for those who are seriously dating, those who may want to revamp their marriage life, and those who are engaged. So please come out and join us in those classes. They will begin on January 16th. You can sign up online or visit the information desk in the lobby as well. And then we have team nights coming up. Everybody say team night. Yeah. Say team night. Yeah. All right, they're going to be on January 17th, Thursday, January 17th. That's not this Thursday, but next Thursday. And this is for anyone, everyone who is serving on a volunteer team at Pure Heart. You are invited to be a part of this. Or if you're not part of a volunteer team at Pure Heart, and you're like, you know, I don't, I'd like to plug in, but I don't really know where yet. This is your first step as well. Team nights are a time where we get together, we talk about vision, we worship together, we have fun together. Pastor Dan's going to be sharing more about what we do, why we do it, and how we can get more, we can be more effective for the kingdom of God. So you do not want to miss it. And we're going to be doing them every single month on the third Thursday. Say third Thursday. No, third Thursday. There it is. Thank you, God, for what you are doing in this place. Thank you, God, that we get to be a part of it. Thank you for everything that has happened this last year, God, and we look forward with eager expectation of what you are going to do this next year. And thank you, God, that we get to be a part of it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Your heart 2019. Here we go. I find the neighbor and say, we get to do this. Come on, we get to do this. 2019. Welcome everybody online. Crossroads Recovery. We love you guys. Your crossroads a big hand to me online today. Everybody take out the chair backs in front of you or the first front row behind you. These blue cards. Everybody in the house, one blue card per person. We're gonna start the year being grateful for 2018, what God has done. How many think that would be a good thing to do? How many think that would be a good thing to do? And we're going to write down the things we're trusting God for in 2019. Remember pens and paper? That's what we're doing today. Pens and paper. So grab those. I want you to begin during the service to just say, Lord, here's the things I'm thankful for in 2018. Here's what I'm trusting you for in 2019. At the end of the service, we're going to fold these in half. You're going to put your name and your address on there because we're going to mail these back to you at the end of the year and you're going to see how God has come through in your life. It's a very special thing we've been doing for about, I don't know, 12 years around this place. So join us in that this year. So I want to start with some highlights of 2018. I'm starting a brand new series next weekend called <laughs> Don't Wait Till Monday. We'll find out what that's all about next week, all right? But today I want to cast a little vision Take some time to thank God and just worship together. I, mean, I think it would be a great way to start 2019. So here we go. We always start with salvations and baptisms. 329 decisions for Jesus last year in our church family. 264 baptisms. Give God a big hand for that. At Easter, we saw 7,000 people. Christmas Eve, 6,000 people. Online in 2017, we had 27,252 Unique logins, that was one URL. We have no idea how many people are behind that one URL, but we do know that we just count one login a week. We had 27,252. In 2018, we had 40,324. Give God a huge hand for that. Our resource center impacted 20,000 people last year. All of our kids' camps and youth camps, 400 families impacted. Opened our next-gen youth building and our brand new children's facility. Added 120 parking spaces. We have eight chaplains now. Eight chaplains at eight different care centers. Elderly care centers in our city. That ge this generation, our oldest generation, often the most loneliest generation. We care about them. We love you. You are not alone. Give God a hand for that as well. Rush Fire opened. How many excited about tacos in this house? All right. Already, they opened in November. Already, they've given $5,000 to our local schools. School Connect saw 7, 000, I'm sorry, 700 churches, schools, and school districts come together in 2018. Resilient Church Conference. 
Last February, we had our first one, 288 leaders from across our city, all different churches, gathered together to find out how we can make a difference in the area of mental health, trauma, addiction, PTSD. How many think that matters to Jesus? Anybody think that matters to Jesus? We're going to have the completion of our counseling center this year. And what we're believing for is that we're going to be able to have intakes for anyone dealing with addiction and helping them getting placed in addiction recovery centers across our city and especially at Crossroads Recovery. And Brenda Cochran, who heads up our counseling ministry, told me the other day, she believes this year with all the improvements that we're making, we will be able to accept health care insurance. We will be able to give the best of the best to the poorest of the poor in our city. Give God a huge hand for that this morning. We are so excited about that. Over 20 plus churches have joined us in our Better Together family of churches across our city. We had the great dedication for our new Peoria campus a couple of nights ago. And this year, buildings 100, 200, 300, and 400 on this campus, the Glendale campus, will be completely remodeled. 100 will be our resource center. 200 is going to be upstairs, our offices. Downstairs is going to be a brand new fitness center. How many are excited about that? <laughs> me too. In the fitness center. This is a cool vision for the fitness center. Pastor Todd was telling me. Not only are we going to be able to support our men and women in our city dealing with addiction. It's also, he's developing classes. For some of our guys and gals will be coming over from Crossroads for our support groups. That they can then plug in and have a fitness workout as well while they're here on our campus to get their body strong as well as their mind strong and their spirit strong. Can we get an amen for that? So it's so exciting. And then our 300 building will be our counseling center. Can't wait for that to be complete. We hope it's all done by the summer. And then 400, half of 400 is going to be storage. I expected more excitement than that. How many know, anybody know you need a little storage? You're building a new house. Anybody know that? Come on. All right. And so the other half of 400, this is so cool. The other half is going to be a studio for recording music. Also, it's going to be a, a system that will pump out our online services out to the world in a clearer and better way. And then this is so good. It's a place where we're going to have a green screen, screen and a whole studio set up to developing videos to bring the gospel in multiple ways digitally. And the best part is our team has, our men and women on our team have such a heart for people in our city and especially for other churches. We know we're not the only thing God's doing in the city. Can we get a yes on that? We care about the church in our city. And so smaller churches in our network that don't have the funds to be able to produce videos can come and use a video and sound studio for absolutely free. You've got a huge chance for that. So I want to encourage you as we celebrate what God's been doing in our church family that you write down what has He been doing in your family? What has He been doing in your life? And make sure you fold that over, put your name and address on there so we can mail it back at the end of this year to you. I want to look at a prayer today in Ephesians chapter 3. Go over there with me in your Bibles or in your Bible app or the verses will also be on the screen. Ephesians chapter 3 and we're going to be in verse 14. And I'm going to break this prayer into two parts. So here we go with the first part. Paul writes, Ephesians 3 verse 14. Remember, he's in prison when he writes this. He says, for this reason, I what? I kneel before the Father. Prayers are usually done standing with hands raised. He gets down on his knees, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name, gets its identity. In our Father, we have two of our greatest human needs. Family is met and identity is met. I'm not who others say I am. I'm not who I feel I am sometimes. I'm who Jesus says I am. Can I get a yes from anybody this morning? Paul goes on. I pray that out of his glorious riches. Okay, Paul. Out of his glorious riches, what is he going to do? That he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your where? Inner being. Change the heart, you'll change the human. Say it with me. Change the heart, you'll change the human. Our hearts drive everything. They drive everything that we do, all of our motives, and they drive, it drives everything that we say. Have you ever said something you regret it? Ever said something you regretted this morning on your way to church? You said something you regretted. Have you ever asked the question, where did that come from? It came from within, people. You see, there's an inner part of us that's just as real as our physical body. And we all understand the need for physical strength. That's why most of us went back to the gym this week, right? My friend Don Eddie sent me this picture and he texted it to me. He said, here's what it looked like with everybody going back to the gym in 2019. <laughs> 
But we often neglect the inner strength of our life. Now Paul tells us the purpose for this inner power, this inner strength. He says, so that Christ may dwell, they say dwell, wow. in our hearts through what? Faith. Faith. Two Greek words here for the idea of dwell. One is a stranger living in a, in a temporary space. The other is a, a permanent resident who has become family. That's the word that Paul uses here. A permanent resident who has become family. Christ will dwell in our hearts. And now here's why this needs to happen. This is so good. Because this is our greatest human need. He says, I pray that you being rooted. Let me say rooted. The word rooted here has the idea of roots going down deep in the soil and twisting around the rocks so that when the storms come, it will not be, that tree will not be uprooted. That you will be rooted and established in what? In love. May have the power with all the saints to grasp, to get your mind around how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. To know this love that surpasses knowledge and to be filled to all the fullness of God. That is an amazing promise. Our greatest human need is to know that we are loved. I see it in my family. I see it in my own life. The other day, Nicole and I were in the kitchen and she was preparing some lunch and we got to kind of goof it around a little bit. Married folks in the house. So, you know, she got poking and I'm poking and she grabbed my arm. She goes, you're so strong. And I'm like, what'd you say? I said, I didn't even flex yet. She's like, really? And I go, yeah, you want me to flex? She said, please. Yeah. Like that, you know? She's like, oh, baby, you are. You're so strong. Like, you're so beautiful. She goes, you're handsome. It was, and I'll stop right there. Okay. So, okay. so as, as we're kind of having fun, she, she looks me in the eyes. She says, I love you. I go, I love you, baby. And she looks at me with big brown eyes. With big brown eyes, she asks this question. She says, do you really love me? How many of you men know that's an interesting moment right there? <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, right? Okay, yeah. She goes, do you really love me? I said, absolutely, I really love you. And then God kind of whispered to my heart and reminded me. She's not asking that because you never tell her. She's asking it because it's her greatest human need. So know that she is loved. You see, friends, in Jesus, the question, our greatest question, am I valued? Do I matter? Am I loved? In Jesus, it's answered, yes. No one can love us more than he loves us. No one else has laid down their life for you and for me. We are absolutely loved to the fullness of love in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Give God a big hand for this. That is the hope that we have. Now, before we dive into this last part, and we talk about these kind of, what if God could do this moment? What if, what if, and we dream and we imagine together. Before we dive into that, I want us to take a moment and just thank Jesus for what he has done in our lives already last year and what he's getting ready to do this year. And every year we just stop as we get done with all these praises and we say, you know what, Jesus? To you be the glory. You're the rock, Jesus, upon which pure heart is built. You receive all honor, praise, and glory. Can I get an amen for that today? So what I want you to do is just stand all across the room. Just stand. And uh, I don't want you to greet each other yet. Here's what I want you to do. Okay? And if you're visiting today, don't, don't, don't panic. Um, we rarely do this, okay? Rarely. All right. I want you to huddle up in groups of like five, seven, eight people. Just kind of huddle up around the auditorium. Just turn first row, turn the back, second row. Kind of huddle up around. Just huddle up. Just do that real quick. Say hi to everybody in your huddle. Just kind of huddle up. Come on, don't let us stand alone. <laughs> Okay, okay, all right, here we go. So here's what we're going to do. Next thing I want you to do, now that you've all said hi three or four times, here's what I want you to do, all right? I want you to nominate somebody to pray out loud. Just do that real quick. No, come on. Point at somebody. Yeah, that's it. Good, good, good. Uh, don't panic. Don't panic. You can do it. We're just talking to Jesus. All right, all right, all right. Now, now. All right, have your attention. One more before, before that person prays. Here's what, here's what I want to do. Give that person time to think about what they're going to say. You're welcome. <laughs> next statement that Paul makes in this prayer he says now to him who is able do you believe that God is able do you believe that Jesus is able to do all things what is that thing that you've been praying for believing for 
Maybe it's for a child to come home. Maybe it's for a relationship to be healed. Maybe it's a financial situation in your life. What is it you've been just saying, oh God, I know that you're able, but I need you to move in this area of my life. For me, my God, I know your able moment has been a really good friend in my life. He's been on drugs since he was 20 years old. He's now 43. He went radio silent. I hadn't heard from him for about six months. I did everything I could to find him. Got a call from him a couple of days ago, about a week ago. He said, Dad, he said the words I couldn't wait to hear. He finally took responsibility. He said, listen, I'm ready to get help. I have to get clean and sober. I can't live like this anymore. And so I, I said, where are you? Where are you? He said, I need you to meet me at a motor vehicle. I need to get a, a photo ID. I have nothing left to my name. He has two bags of clothes. That's all he's got left to his name. He said, I need a photo ID so I can get into Copper Springs and get into detox. So uh, I was able to set that up. And I dropped him off at Copper Springs last Sunday. I was sitting in the living room with Nicole. We were listening to Pastor Chris preach. He did a great job last week, didn't he? And I was listening to Chris preach. And uh, my, my friend called me and says, I'm ready to go. I've got everything I lined up. And I left him. I, I, didn't, I had these pajama bottoms on and a t-shirt. I just left just like that. I just got in my car and drove and got him. I picked him up at the Motel 6 over here. Bell Road and I-17. I dropped him off at Copper Springs. Talked with Crossroads this week, and Brenda helped me set it up. So all of you at Crossroads, his name is Matthew. He will be with you on Wednesday morning. And it's, my God, you're more than able moment. Because I know that God can set us free. And so I want to take a moment in our circles right now, all across this room, it's going to be a beautiful sound, to just say, God, thank you for what you're doing in the life of pure heart. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of the families in this circle. Just... Say thank you, Jesus, for a few minutes. Ready? Go. Ephesians chapter 3. Here we go. Here we go. Paul says, Now to him who is what? Able. able. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. Basically what Paul does is he takes two Greek words and he matches them together. He makes up his own Greek phrase, if you will. It's kind of like for us we'd say, to infinity and beyond or something like that. He says, to him, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask, and then I love this next part, or all that we imagine. How many of you have great imaginations? I grew up without a television until I was 10 years old. Aww. I know, it's so sad, isn't it? 10 years old. But I had a great imagination. I lived on a farm in Illinois, so there weren't a lot of kids around. So I had such a good imagination. I made up two imaginary friends, Mark and Jeff. <laughs> it's not like I talked to them. You know, right? Quiet, guys. I'll be with you later. All right, so. Just kidding. But I had this amazing imagination. And I could think about all these wonderful things in, in life. And Paul says, yeah, yeah, yeah. That deep imagination, those things that, that you just wonder, God, what if? As a little kid, I was like, what if kids would move in down the road, down the lane? As an adult, as a pastor now, I have some great, what if, God, what if you could do this? 
What if you would do this? I know you can't. What if you would do this in my life, in our ministry, in our family? This last, and I've never done it this way. I've never started the year this way. I've never introduced new leaders to you before. But one of my what if questions for this year, because you know, we, there's so many things that God is doing. So many things he's doing. And I get our go area alone. You know? I look at I see Amy. I might, Amy Miles did. So I mean, she served that area for so many. She knows it's a massive area. Can I get an amen, Amy? There's just so much stuff going on. And you're thinking, Lord, we need more help. We need more full-time leadership. Not just part-time. We need more help. God, what if in our connect and go area, what, what if in our grow area, we can have more leadership? God, what if this would happen? I look at our children's ministry. We were up 30%. In children's ministry, just for Christmas Eve service alone, thirty percent more kids than last year. Give God a hand for that. Oh my God, what are you going to do? We have an amazing team. Listen to me. We have an amazing team of people. I get up every day and get to do ministry. I get to do ministry with some of the greatest men and women who love Jesus with all their heart. Can we give our staff a huge hand? We have our volunteers a huge hand. Amazing young women. Oh my God. I know that we need to add more leadership. I know we do. So I was thinking about children's ministry. God, how do we add to this already amazing team? So I was, a couple months ago, I was praying, like, Lord, what are we going to do? What if we could add in a full-time leader in children's ministry? And so I also the name came in my mind. Jennifer Lindsay. And I said, oh, okay, okay, hang on, hang on. So I said, Jennifer Lindsay. I'm like, but God, she's already involved at Northwest Christian. She's been there 11 years. She's a director now. She has an incredible job. I mean, she, she could have the weekends to just hang out with her family. You know, I, I didn't know if she would want to come be back in full-time ministry at a church. Again, she just finished her, her master's up with early childhood development. God, she's got a whole career path with Northwest Christian. It's a great school. God, what if that could happen? So I walked on the campus at church a couple of Sundays, a while back, and I look over, and there's her husband, Mark. And the, there's like a beam of light that's shining on his head. And I, I, went, really, I went over, and, and I said, Mark, I said, you think I got a crazy question. Do you think Jim would ever be interested in coming back and serving full-time ministry at a church again? And he goes, well, why don't you ask him? <laughs> okay, I'll do that. All right, Mark, I'll ask him. So I called up Jim. I said, Jim, do you think you have any desire at all to be back involved in full-time ministry at a church? She said, well, let me pray about it. And I said, I already did. And so, you know, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. All right. So I give you Jennifer Lindsay, our newest member of our children's group, to give her a hand. Come on, man. Look at um, Yeah, here I am. Here you are. <laughs> As Dan said, I've been gone for, um, I've been in Pure Heart, but I've been at Northwest Christian for 11 years. Um, last July or August, Dan uh, mentioned to us that we were being gifted a second campus. And I was driving home that day after serving in the info center, and the radio was off. And a uh, thought came to my head, um, what if you were asked to uh, go back into ministry? And I turned the radio on and kind of ignored the thought. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just kept it to myself. I didn't share with anybody. And then uh, you called in October. And um, I said, yes, yeah, I'll pray about it. And uh, I was kind of just saying, God, Block it or bless it. Tell me what you want me to do. Um, I, from the very beginning, asked um, God for a burning bush moment. I wanted him to speak to me like he did to Moses. So I was outside of Jennifer's house lighting the bushes on fire. <laughs> hey, just look out the window. I think God's speaking to you. A lot of money in places in bushes. I, I had a novel idea a couple weeks after praying um, just for the burning bush. I, I went back to the, um, to the Bible and I said... Um, God spoke to me through uh, Exodus 3 and 4, specifically um, what resonated with me were uh, verses 10 and 12. Moses is telling God when God's calling him to him, he's saying, God, it's not me. I, I can't speak. I, I'm not eloquent. I never have been um, to somebody else. And uh, that was kind of where my heart was. Um, and God says to him, who gave human beings their mouth? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? And then he says, now go. I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. And that was kind of our burning bush moment, um, my husband and I. And here I am. I'm so excited for the plans that God has um, to be able to just implement me and use me in the already established and amazing team of um, Heart Kids Ministry. All the ladies there from check-in with Nancy to early childhood, Stephanie and Melissa, um, on upstairs, 
to um, Emily and Lisa and Brie. Uh, they give our kids an amazing opportunity to see Christ and to see people walking out um, their relationship with Christ. And I'm just excited to join that team and um, just run after Jesus and uh, partner with you as, as parents to um, just passionately teach our kids how to follow him. You've got a good chance. So I'm going to start thinking this last year. You know, what about connect, grow, and go? And a lot of you don't use this, have, hear me use that language very often, but that's how we, we divide up and team up all of our ministries to adults in our church family. And connect is all about connecting with Christ, connecting with his family. Grow is all about discipleship and following Jesus. Go is what we're doing in the community and around the world. And I said, Lord, wouldn't it be amazing is that in 2019, we could find lead pastors for all of those areas because like Rachel Kekik, who there's few people who have the relationship skills and the ability to connect people like Rachel does. And Mark Hendricks with all that he's been doing, and he's been doing double duty with all of our construction stuff. And I'm like, Lord, Mark really needs to focus on all the business stuff, administration stuff, and future campus development. He can't be doing these multiple things, God. What do we what would we do? So I said, okay, Rachel, I think Connect Ministry, you be the lead over Connect Ministry. Everybody's like, yeah, Rachel. I'm like, that just leaves the Grow Ministry and the Go Ministry. We need a lead over those two areas. God, what are we gonna do? How do we add leadership horsepower to those two areas? One of my closest friends in ministry. Is Pastor John Jennings from the Fountain Church. He's a senior, he's a senior pastor at Fountain Church. And now he and I and our wives were driving one day a few months back, seven months back, and we were talking about life and ministry. And I looked at John and asked him the question I always ask senior pastors. I asked him the question, what do you really love to do in ministry? And John looked at me and he says, you know, Dan, he says, I really feel like my season of being a senior pastor is probably coming to an end by the end of 2018. He said, but, but if I could do one thing, I would love to take the rest of my life in ministry and focus in on helping people grow and walk with Jesus. I would love to be on a team where I could focus all of my time and energy and all my greatest thoughts and dreams on how to help people not just know about Jesus, but to walk with Jesus. And so after we got done talking about that, we've been praying about it for a little while, I want to introduce you to John Jennings, our newest lead pastor for Connect Ministries, Grow Ministries. Would you give John a big hand for that? What's going on, Pure Heart family? How you doing? Wow. I, am, I am so humbled to be here. When Dan and I first started talking about this, I was having conversations with my wife, and I said, you know, it's amazing because Pure Heart has gotten to this point of influence in this city without us, so why, why would they want us to be a part of this? And, and I'm so humbled, I'm so humbled to to be able to join a team of great people who want to impact a city. That's the thing that's impressed me about this church is that you're not just about growing pure heart. You want to touch a city. Amen. I was born here. I'm a native. Any natives out there? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> there were only two in person. <laughs> I know. The rest of them show up at 10, 15. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. What gets me out of bed in the morning is a single life mission, and that is I want to see journeys empowered, and I want to see us shape culture in alignment with what Jesus told us. Jesus said, if, if, if you believe in me, you'll have eternal life. You will have passed from death unto life. And so knowing him is part of this, is what Dan's preaching about this morning. But then also in 1 John chapter 3, and verse 14, it says, by this you will know that you have passed from death unto life if you love one another. So discipleship is not merely about us growing and becoming part of some esoteric, deeper life club. It's, it's, it's really Can you about... you say esoteric one more time? That's such a powerful word. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Just say that with me. Esoteric. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> See what you signed up for? I know, I know. It's right? years of this, man. Exactly. I'm excited. <laughs> this is what I want to give the rest of my life to. <laughs> so... Anyway, everybody's on a journey. Everybody at Crossroads, you guys are on a journey. Everybody is from, from childhood on up. And so we want to come alongside and empower that journey. But yet, like Jesus said, by this you will know that you pass from death into life if you love one another. So it's about what God does in us, but ultimately about what God does through us to change the world around us. That's my heart. I look forward to meeting each of you. God bless. Thank you, God. Hey, my mind, I don't want to
good. So we have these one-if moments, and we children's ministry is being strengthened, and now we've got, you know, Connect has got more laser beam, but now the, the grow area. God, what about go? It's a massive area. I mean, thousands and tens of thousands of people around the city, and we're adding new things all the time that God wants to do in our city and around the world, international missions. God, we need more leadership horsepower. I said, first of all, we need to add at least two full-time members to that team, at least two. And at least one of those could be a new lead pastor over that area to free Mark up to do what he's doing with business and finances. And so there's this great guy in our city. Actually, a couple years ago, I talked to him about joining our team. That didn't work out at that time. He hadn't heard from Jesus yet. And so at that, so he gives me a call, right? He gives me a call. Donnie Rodriguez, he gives me a call. He's been working with Young Life and connected all of our city for many, many years. Was back in Dallas for a while working with Young Life. And I thought, you know what? Donnie would be fantastic. So he calls me up and we're having coffee. And I'm like, Donnie. He goes, you know what? I miss being a part of the church. I miss being part of a team in a church. I want to be a part of a team in a church that's making a difference in the city. Would you consider me? And I said, let me pray about it. Okay. And so, <laughs> no, I pray, I pray. And so I want to give you Donnie Rodriguez, our newest member, our newest pastor in the Go area. Give him a big hand as he comes up here. Come on, Donnie. Three years ago, my wife and I just had moved back from Dallas where we were working with inner city urban ministries, kids and their families, and um, I found myself at Huntington University, and they have a, a campus right there at uh, uh, P83 by Harkins, and on third floor, uh, they had a balcony that overlooks all of that Arrowhead area, and I remember standing up there and just praying, I said, God, give me an opportunity to connect with the schools out here and the kids and the families. I don't know them yet, but I know you have something for us. And not long after that, I had a chance to uh, start substitute teaching. I thought that would be a way. And, and my first call I got was to substitute as a te uh, music teacher for Cheyenne Elementary for kindergarten through fourth. I've never done that before. Um, and they told me that working with kindergartners is like herding cats. And, and, and they were right. They were right. But I remember, like, I would start my mornings with those kids. We'd high-five and start with the music. And, and I would do, okay, give me, a, give me a great story from last night. What happened last night at home? And kids would say, um, when, you know, we went to the movies last night. Or, or we got a puppy and came to this one little girl. She said, we ate last night. And, and I thought she was going to say, uh, we ate pizza or Chinese food or something. She says, no, we ate food. Mom and I don't, mommy and I don't always have food. And last night we had a meal together. It broke my heart. We got to do more for these kids. And a few months ago I had a chance to uh, sell that Peoria High School. I was talking to this young girl, uh, Aziana. Her name, uh, I call her AZ. AZ! And I called down the hallway and I said, tell me your story. And she goes, my mom's a drug addict. My father's been in jail more than I know him. And she said this, I'm going to rise above. I'm going to be better. I'm going to finish school. I'm going to move on. So, yeah, yeah, we've got to do this. And so those crazy last, last uh, service, uh, Kayla, who works here for, with the fifth, uh, fifth graders, she says she punched her husband. So girls don't, ladies don't punch her husband. She heard me say that she knows Aziana. She works with her because she works with homeless students in our Peoria schools. And she goes, we got to do more. And so we're going to connect more. But a chance to do something. And so as I was praying, how can I do more? Um, I called you and I, we were sitting at breakfast four months ago. It seems like a lot was happening four months ago with us, huh? <laughs> um, we were sitting at breakfast on a Sunday and uh, they told me, hey, uh, Pure Heart's moving over to Peoria. And uh, I've been married for 40 years to this wonderful woman. But every time I pick up my phone, if I'm with someone, she goes, you're so rude. Put your phone down. So at breakfast, I excused myself, got my phone out, and I texted you. And I realized, wait a minute, it's string service. I better not. But I did. And what's so crazy is he answered me. So I don't know if he did this. <laughs> but I said, we got to talk. Me. I got to take this. You're coming to my neighborhood. And I was so excited. And then we met for coffee. I said, what will it take for me to, to be part of this family? Well, we can do more. And I'm so grateful. I sat here at Christmas Eve services. And I pinched myself. I thought, I get to be part of this family. And to, to be part of a group like with, with Ro Minor, who who does the food pantry with her crazy team, uh, you know, Steve Cope and his Copisms. If you know Steve, he has something great to say always. And, and Frank and Arthur. And, and, and to be there, if you ever want to do something that's worthwhile, two hours of your week, you, you hand out food and you're handing up 
to people in our neighborhood. You're going to laugh a lot because Chris, if you've ever heard her laugh, you laugh with her and, and your heart breaks for people. So we get to do that. And, and Debbie Ludnaka, who just loves Sunburst Elementary and, and the community around it. And my first two weeks, I was involved with Michelle and Amy in the Christmas store. I didn't know what I was doing. I stayed out of their way. I just said, you tell me what to do. I've been married long enough. You tell your woman. You just tell me what to do, and I will do it. So, um, but I got a chance to do that. that. Not that. So locally, we do stuff, and then globally. We just came back from Mexico, and we, I, I'm working with people that are not even Spanish. I speak Spanish, but they, they're not Spanish background. They speak better than me. So I get a chance to serve with people that are doing things. And one of our statements at church is, being like Christ for the sake of others. And, and that, is, that is an answer to 1 John 3.18 where it says, Don't love just with words or speech, but with your actions and in truth. And I'm so glad, glad that you gave me a chance to be part of a family here that's putting love into action. So thank you very much and, and let's do this. Thank you. Thank you. We had a coffee together at Starbucks, and he, and he, and he leans in, he goes, you know the, the, the crazy thing is, he said, do you know the senior pastor in our city that's the most like you? I mean, he, he's got your heart, he, he literally is the most like you, and he tells me this guy's name. And when he tells me the guy's name, I think I start chuckling inside, I'm like, Donnie, I gotta tell you something. Uh, I've been talking with him for about a year now, and uh, he is considered coming on our team, and at that point we were still working out some details. But now he is on our team. And here's the good news. I get to introduce him to you in two weeks. All right? In two weeks. I know. I'm, I know. I know. I'm busting to tell you. And some of you, you already know him. You're going to be like, oh my goodness. He's joining us. Amazing story. Amazing family. But here's what I love about this pastor. He's been a senior pastor for many, many years now. We were traveling together about two years ago. And I asked him, I said, man, what? Same question I ask a lot of people. What's your dream? What's your passion? He says, you know, I really feel like my season is coming to an end as a senior leader. He says, I just want to be on a team. I want to be on a team of people that wants to make a difference in the city and a difference around the world. And so he and I have been praying for quite a while. He has a nonprofit ministry that is so in alignment with what we are already doing in our resource center, what's happening in our schools. He's going to be able to add things to it, like English as a second language. So many other things. And the thing that's going to be so powerful about what he's bringing to the current family and adding to it to all the amazing things that are happening is another burden I carry as a senior leader is the idea of finances. Can anybody relate to that? I mean, know there's a budget that's involved, right? I was talking to Ken, our administrator, that just the way God is just, you know, the way he can work it out. All this, all this additional strength. Our budget goes up less than, get your mind around it, less than for the current budget, less than. One percent. I still am not quite sure how God worked all of that out. I mean, it took a long time to explain. How many have a story in your life where it took a long time to explain how God worked it all out? And you finally just say, and he worked it all out. <laughs> get a yes from anybody. Okay? But on top of that, his nonprofit organization is eligible for tax donation, tax credit. Do you know what that means for our family? That means that our next budget, our next fiscal budget, could be significantly less than it currently is because we as a pure heart family could tell our tax dollars where to go rather than the government tell our tax dollars where to go. We could take the money we've been currently giving to our state government and we could direct it immediately to what's happening in schools, what's happening, having the trauma and addiction in our city, and we could have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and still get to put in the to make a difference in our city. Family, God is up to something big in our church family. He just continues to take us from glory to glory to glory for His glory. Can I get an amen this morning? For His glory. Not our glory. For His glory. And so I want to encourage you, as we get ready to close today, please fill out these blue cards. What's God doing in your life personally? What are you thankful for? How, how do you see Him? What do you, where do you need Him to, where are you trusting Him to move in your life in 2019? Just let my little what if moment today be an inspiration in your own life, in your own ministry, in your own family, for the in your own business, for the things that God wants to do through you to be His salt and His light for His glory in our city and around the world. What is it you're asking Him to do? And so Paul comes to the end of this beautiful, beautiful prayer. And these are the, the final words that he writes. And this is what he says. Let's say it together. Ready? 
go. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's say it again with real passion, family. Ready? Go. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Let's stand all across the room for just a moment. We'll do a couple things as we end and we close today. First of all, I want you to bow your heads with me. We never, ever, ever want to end without giving the opportunity for those of you who need a relationship with Jesus Christ to make that the greatest decision of your life. So for those of you listening online, if today you say, I need a relationship with Jesus, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. There's a button right there on your screen that says, today I put my trust in Christ. Would you click that button in just a moment? I'm going to call you to pray with the rest of us here in the auditorium. Every single weekend, family, at least seven people click that button online. Would you give God a huge hand for that? At least seven people a weekend. We're going to continue to grow. And so for the rest of us in the room here today with heads bowed, I just want to give the opportunity. Are you here today? And maybe for the first time in your life, you need to say, you know, I'm going to start this new year. I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I want Him to lead my life. I'm done leading my own life. I'm not doing a good job. I need Him. I need His hope. I need His peace. I need His joy. Maybe for some of you sitting, standing here today, you'd say, you know what, maybe I made that decision years ago. But today I need to rededicate myself to Jesus. So if that's you, first time or rededication of your life to Christ, what we do in this safe place is we raise our hand high. So if you're ready to make that decision with no one looking around, would you just raise your hand up really high all over this room and say, yeah, absolutely, keep raising them. Yep, and yep, keep raising them. I need to try, yep, and yep, absolutely, keep raising them. Keep raising them. Raise them high so I can see you today. Come on. I need Christ today. Fantastic. All of you with your hands raised, go ahead and put them down right now. Go ahead and put them down. Pray this in your heart. God hears you. Say this to Him. Everybody online, praying with us. Lord Jesus, right now in this moment, I commit my life to You. I trust You with my life. I surrender my heart to You. Jesus, fill me with Your presence. Fill me with Your power, Your hope, love, and peace. Fill me, Lord. Jesus, forgive me. Oh, that's important. Breathe that to Him. Forgive me. You know what I've done. You know my sin. I give it to You now. Thank You for Your grace. Thank You for Your forgiveness. Thank You for Your love. In Jesus' name, Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's give God a huge hand for that. So, we're going to close today with this powerful worship song. I encourage you all just please stay. Let's worship together, and then Pastor Michael will come up and close our service. Let's worship together with the top of your lungs, guys. Here we go. All the worries of this world. Get all the love.